Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Day Spotlight. Today, we're headed up and over to Mobile, Alabama, where we find 15-year-old pro late model, super late model. If it's got four wheels, he's driving it, Grant Thompson. Grant, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, Rod. How about yourself? I'm doing awesome, man. I, I get a chance to spend a little bit of time with you and talk about you know, what's been going on in the world of Grant Thompson, which is is pretty exciting. So um, for a lot of the, the the watch, the people that are viewing tonight that doesn't know exactly what you're doing, tell us what you're doing for 2021. Well, I've been racing in the, uh, the Tundra Super Light Model Series with Casey Johnson Racing. Uh, also, I was racing in the Cars Tour uh, Light Model Stock Series with Justin Johnson Racing. And, uh, I've been off and on with uh, Pro Late Models with Corporate Motorsports. Just uh, I've been doing a few of those this year, but mainly the full time series has been Tundra Super Late Models and uh, Car Store. So it's been a whole lot of fun, you know, transferring between those two series. And uh, I feel like we've done a decent job at, you know, where we've been finishing in those, you know, those, ra those races. Okay. So let me ask you I I'm gathering with the name like the Tundra series that this series has got to be up north. Am I, am I correct? Yes, in Wisconsin. So it's different little climbing up there. <laughs> well, you know what? I think you were up there for a couple of races. It was actually pretty hot, wasn't it? You know, we actually did really well in the first race. We finished second to, to Casey, actually. So uh, that was a pretty solid race. Uh, you know, started towards the front of the field and was able to, you know, maintain our spot for most of the race. And Casey got by me uh, with about probably 20 to go-ish. But, uh, yeah, I brought home the second place finish. and. Uh, you know, that really shocked me how we did that in my first race. That was my debut in a Super, so that was – I was super proud of myself for that. I don't know how I did it, but, uh, you know, move on to a, to Marshall Motor Speedway. We didn't do as well, but we still had a solid top ten finish. We finished eighth in that race. Didn't have – you know, it, it's real difficult running this series because, you know, the tire shortage of Hoosier right now, it's, it's really affecting us with, you know, getting brand-new tires right before qualifying and, you know, seeing what the car will do on fresh, on you know, on fresh stickers. And, uh, you know, that kind of affected us a little bit. But um, I, we, were, we qualified, like, I believe 16th at, at Marshfield. So it wasn't the best, but, you know, could have could have done a whole lot better. But uh, ended up finishing eighth in that race. Didn't do bad. This uh, this past race at Jefferson wasn't the best. We That's probably that was my worst finish we had in the super race. Just, it was a rough race track to get the hang of, you know, small, not really high banked. And real hard to pass on but uh you know we learned a lot from it and i uh, made some mistakes but uh you know we'll move we'll move on to the next one but so far i say we've had a solid season in the Thunder series yeah absolutely because i i know from from being up in that area a little bit last year that there are some unbelievable late model drivers up there and a lot of these guys you've never heard their name but when you go to their track you're on their turf and they race there every night they're tough to beat Absolutely. It's difficult because, you know, I, I knew a few of the guys, but, you know, I didn't know any hardly anybody. But, uh, you know, now, now that I'm, I've got to meet a few of them and race door to door, some of them, they're really good racers. It's, it's real hard to go up there with a series that they've been in for a few years now, you know, me coming to it. And, you know, we've we've done a really solid with the way we've you know been handling it. But it's real hard to outrun those guys. They're really competitive and uh you know, Casey, Casey's a four-time champion in that series. So, you know, just to be able to have Casey there, you know, helping us out and he's, you know, teaching me the different lines and stuff at each track and how to drive it. That's really helped, you know, boost my confidence in these racetracks. But, you know, Casey, he knows everybody in that series and knows everything about this car. So it's definitely been a whole lot of fun. Yeah, an awesome advantage for you to have such a great teacher. So, you know, we, we all know, you know, what you did last year in the Pro Late Model Racing for Augie Grill. So just real short, tell us the difference, the main difference between you jumping in a pro late model and then getting into that super late model. What, what What's really the big difference as far as you're concerned? There's not a huge difference. Uh, you know, it's on the same kind of tire, a 10 inch slick Hoosier, but uh, you know, it's just mainly the motor. It's it's a 604 versus a built motor and it's, it's just horsepower mainly. I mean, it, it makes a huge difference whenever you're, you know, going down the straightaway and everything, but uh you know, they don't really drive a whole lot different, in my opinion, which, of course, you know, the Tundra, it's a two-barrel carburetor. It's not a four-barrel like the ones you see at the Snowball Derby. But um, that, that does change a big horsepower difference. But to me, 
you know, the, with them being on the same tire, it's, it's difficult because the Super just has a lot more, you know, speed and horsepower. But uh, that's pretty much the difference. I mean, it's not a, a big difference, but it's it, it definitely changes the way you're, you have to drive it. Right. So let's shift gears a little bit and let's talk about getting out of. So you, you've been in a pro late model. You're still doing some of that this year. You've been in a super late model and then you go out east. And you get in this big, heavy cars tour, late model stock. I know that had to be a lot different than anything that you've ever drove up to this point. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've watched cars tour a little bit, you know, when I was younger, but I, you know, I didn't realize how heavy they, how heavy they were. And just, they're, they're really fast. You know, they have somewhat the same motor as a pro late model. So it has that kind of speed. It has the steering box of like the pro truck I drove last year. So it was it was a big difference going to it. But, uh, you know, we were with Justin Johnson racing. Justin's really good at that stuff. And, you know, my teammate, uh, my race face teammate, Caden Honeycutt, he's been in it and he told me a little bit about it. So, you know, when we went to Dominion for that first race, that was, you know, it was it was crazy. We adapted to it pretty quick and, you know, we showed decent speed. But racing against those guys, they're they're so competitive. I mean, you look at the names, you know, Josh Berry. Bobby McCarty, Justin Johnson. It's just, it was a big field of names, you know, that I've heard of and that I've, I've, I've never raced against, but it was, you know, it was a reality check for us. We went up there and, you know, we, we didn't do the best, but we were, we practiced pretty well and we had a pretty good qualifying spot, but it, it's a, it's a whole different animal going up there to race with those guys. Well, I, I can tell you, I was really proud of you because, you know, I, I think the goal going up there was to run all the laps you know, and, and bring the car home in one piece. And you did all of that. And for people that really know what the Cars Tour is all about, in my personal opinion, that is the most competitive series in the country week in and week out. Because again, you, you show up at some of these tracks and yes, you do have the Berries and the McCarty's and, you know, the Deke McCaskill's and a lot of those guys that run up front all the time, Timothy Peters runs there. But then you go into a particular track and you, now you got to race that track champion. And he might only run one or two races, you know, uh, kind of what's going to happen, you know, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, Tri-City later this year, or I shouldn't say that, we're going to um, Wake County. When you go to Wake County, there's going to be a guy that just, you know, he could drive around Wake County with his eyes closed. You know, this weekend at, at Hickory Motor Speedway, you know, those guys are going to have to race against uh, Ryan Millington. And guess what? He will be one to beat. You know, you may not run the full cars tour season, but when you come to when you come to his home turf, you're going to have to deal with him. So if that wasn't enough in the middle of all this kind of going on, you shot out to the West Coast and went out there and run an SRL pro late model for Mike Nake. So tell us a little bit about that experience. Absolutely. You know, we, we drove we ran some stuff with Mike Nake, you know, in Madeira a few times uh, in 2019. You know, we went to Tucson, Arizona for, for the turkey shoot last year and actually won that race. And to come back out here with, with Nate Clower, they're a really good team, really good group of guys. And we went out there and, you know, the track, Kern County Raceway Park, it was a huge track, you know, real wide. I, I've seen, you know, I watched a few videos on it. You know, guys like Derek Thorne went out there and won. Just there's a, you know, SRL, it's basically like, you know, the Snowball Derby of the West Coast. Very competitive yeah. guys. You know, they're really close together, but, um, you know, it was, it was a difference because it was a, you know, it was a, it was a pro late model, but it was a 602, you know, it wasn't a 604. So you had to keep your momentum rolling around the whole track. Uh, we ended up finishing six at that race. It was actually, it was, it was pretty good. We weren't the best in qualifying, but, you know, we, we've been all over the country this year, racing different cars with different teams at different racetracks. And uh, I, I don't, I don't think we did bad. We might go out there later this year and do another race with them. But uh, I, I say we had a solid finish for what, you know, what we what we did. Yeah, I agree. I mean, when you stop and think about it, you just you, haven't, you just turned 15. And this year you've been up been up north. You've raced with some of the best late model drivers in that Tundra series. You went out on the East Coast. You raced absolutely with the best late model stock drivers in the country out there. You go out to the West. You're, you're, you're racing against the top late model drivers in the SRL series. And again, you know, you just turned 15. <laughs> so uh, do you ever stop and kind of pinch yourself and go, oh, my gosh, I think this is like crazy. And the one thing that I want to compliment you on, uh, both you and your dad, about making these decisions is that, you know, a lot of people get really focused in on, oh, I got to go race one place and, you know, I got to run, 
and, and win a championship. And let me tell you what, when this year is over, you're going to look back at this year and go, I probably learned more this year how to be a racer than any time in my career. Because again, different teams, different spotters, different cars, different tracks. What, a, what an amazing development time for to be Grant Thompson. Absolutely. You know, it's like you said, we've learned a lot this year because, you know, last year we didn't do as much traveling as we've been doing this year, racing in different spots of the country. But, you know, it's, it's really teaching me how to adapt to these different cars and different tracks in a little amount of time. You know, you only get like two days of practice and it's really taught me how to, how to become a better race car driver but we might, we, we might not have had 18 wins or something this year because, you know, we're not at the same track. But, I mean, I'll take, like, five or ten finishes racing against who we're racing against. You know what I mean? Like, it's a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. not Hands down. You know, I, I'm, I'm just really impressed with what's been going on with you this year. And, and you know, earlier in the year, there's this, there's this draft called the Speed 51 Short Track Draft. And for, like, two weeks leading up to it, everybody's sitting on pins and needles and wanting to know, you know, of, of the three or 400 drivers that they're looking at, am I going to be able to make it into the top hundred? Am I going to be able to make it into the top 50, you know, breaking into top 20 would be like a dream come true. But Grant, were you shocked when they picked you number 16? Absolutely. It, it shocked me because you know, last year we finished, I think we were 46th or 47th, and we moved up that much all the way up to 16th. And, you know, I was I was scrolling through the list of guys. We we finished – I finished ahead of a lot of really good drivers, and I was just shocked to see where I was compared to, you know, to that top 50. That was just – I shocked, I was shocked, you know. it's We moved up a whole lot. And I just I can't think Speed 51 enough. They they in my opinion they did a really good job, you know, choosing out the drivers. But you know, I told my dad I was like, you know, we moved up a lot this year to 16th. I can't wait to see where we finish this next year. That's what's yeah. going to shock me the most. I'm thinking you're going to break the top 10, man. Because again, I, you know, the, the the cool thing about the guys at Speed 51 is they understand what you're doing. They're not looking at it and say, well, Grant didn't win a championship or he didn't do that. They know exactly what you're doing and they know the, the type of competition you're racing against and the experience that you're getting. So I, I think you'll be in the top 10 next year. Uh, you'll be in my top 10 anyway. <laughs> not that that really means a lot. But um, but anyway, Grant, um, I know that you got some some big races coming up. If you had to pick something that you got yourself focused on, what what is the next big thing that's going to happen with Grant Thompson? Well, you know, I, I think about that. I wanna I wanna run the Snowball Derby this year. I don't know how we're looking for that. We got we got to find a sponsor to help us out with that. But uh, you know, we are doing the Snowflake 100 with Curbrit Motorsports. Uh, you know, we're we're looking at a few different races this year that I'm really looking forward to. I'm not 100 percent sure what I'm doing in 2021. But uh, the Snowball Derby, we're definitely going to be on our A game, you know, at the Snowflake. That's that's a real big event I'm looking to, you know, I'm looking forward to. This. So there you go. If you're a sponsor out there looking for a, a good, young, talented driver, not only on the track, but you're seeing here a great spokesperson and a great talent off the track. And you and you want to put your name on a car? It's that, the number 54 super late model, the Snowball Derby. And I think, and, and I might be wrong, but is this not the 54th annual Snowball Derby? It's, you know, uh, it's been me and my dad's dream since I was younger. This year is the 54th annual Snowball Derby. My dad turned 54 a few months ago. And, you know, I've been racing the 54 car for Casey Johnson Racing. It would shock me if if we were to get into it this year and, and possibly try to do something with it. I don't know. It, it, uh, yeah, but you've been, you've been racing the 54 no matter where you go. You go out on the West Coast, you're in the 54 car. I think the stars are aligning. So sponsors, if you're watching this show or you know somebody that wants to get involved, the Snowball Derby is like the Daytona 500 for, for late model drivers. Get on board with this young kid. You'll be glad that you did. Grant, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, for all of you, make sure to go to GrantThompsonRacing.com. GrantThompsonRacing.com. 
Make sure to go to his fan zone, sign up for his digital newsletter, follow him on social media, and become a Grant Thompson fan. So Grant, again, thank you for being with us, and we'll look forward to getting back with you later this year. Thank you, Rod. I appreciate it. Okay, everybody. Thanks again for watching. Uh, this is a Race Face Spotlight interview, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you back here in two weeks. Everybody have a great evening.